15-year-old daughter of a Vatican worker who vanished more than three decades ago. Scandal and controversy, it's a story in every faith that exists in the world. But the Tiber River can't contain the secrets that are coming out of the Vatican's walls. Located within Rome, this sacred city hides stories that will blow your mind. And you better not get fooled by its small size, because this tiny place holds enormous power. With just 453 people residing here, it's the seat of the Roman Catholic Church and a historic force indeed. Beyond the grandeur and influential practices like secrets that nobody has ever known. The Vatican guards a treasure trove of unsettling incidents and sinister mysteries that demand our attention. Today, we're unraveling the terrifying secrets of this splendid and prestigious nation. Join us on this journey into the Vatican's secrets that will leave you shocked. Number 15. A Roman Necropolis Atop the eerie Vatican Hill lies the magnificent St. Peter's Basilica, concealing an ancient mystery beneath its grandeur, the burial ground of the remarkable St. Peter himself. In long-forgotten times, this very spot was a Roman necropolis, a city of the dead, shrouded in pagan traditions. The tale takes a dramatic twist back in 64 AD when a devastating fire engulfed Rome, sending the city into chaos. To escape blame, the cunning Emperor Nero cunningly accused Christians of igniting the flames. This led to gruesome executions, with St. Peter being one of the unfortunate souls crucified and laid to rest in a simple grave on Vatican Hill. As the Christian faith gained recognition in Rome during the 4th century, the visionary Emperor Constantine initiated the construction of the original basilica right atop the sacred burial site. The heart of this magnificent structure was believed to enshrine St. Peter's very tomb. Centuries passed, and in the 1500s, the present-day St. Peter's Basilica came to life, an awe-inspiring masterpiece standing tall over the catacombs and the long-sought grave of the revered St. Peter. Today, this grand monument stands not just as a symbol of architectural brilliance, but also as a testament to the enduring faith and the enigmatic history that lies beneath its hallowed grounds. Number 14. Secret Archives The Vatican Secret Archives Imagine a place where the most fascinating stories of humanity are kept safe, protected, and preserved. It's not just any library, it's a collection of Catholic wonders that'll leave you awe-inspired. Within these sacred walls lie 53 miles of precious shelves loaded with 35,000 volumes housing the most incredible records from history. You won't believe the names that grace these pages. Abraham Lincoln, Mary, Queen of Scots, and many more. It's like a star-studded history book right in front of your eyes. Let's journey back in time to some of the most thrilling moments captured within these archives. Remember the brave soul Galileo? He dared to question the church's view on the Earth's motion. Well, we have the notes from his trial that led to his house arrest. Discover the very document from 809 CE, showcasing a generous donation to a church in Venice. A true testament to the art of giving and the papal bulls, those ancient and powerful decrees. In 1493, Alexander VI penned a bull that granted Spain control over vast lands, effectively redrawing the map. Then, in 1521, Pope Leo the Yank took a stand, excommunicating Martin Luther for his beliefs. This defining moment would forever change the course of history. But that's not all. The archives hold heartfelt pleas, too. Picture Mary, Queen of Scots, just months before her tragic end, seeking help from Pope Sixtus V to escape her impending fate. Alas, despite her appeal, her life couldn't be spared. And who can forget the infamous letter from King Henry VIII? He yearned for an annulment to marry his beloved Anne Boleyn, but the Pope refused, and thus the Church of England was born. These archives are a time machine, taking you on a captivating journey through the highs and lows of history. Number 13. Cadaver Synod during the extraordinary year 897 AD, an astonishing event unfolded in the heart of the Catholic Church. Picture this, a shocking trial like no other, where the accused was none other than a deceased man. Brace yourself for the incredible Cadaver Synod that took place under the watchful eye of Pope Stephen VI, the successor of the late Pope Formosus. Let's delve into this curious trial where the deceased Pope stood accused of an unthinkable crime, seizing the papacy from beyond the grave. 
Yes, you heard that right, even though he had peacefully rested for seven long months. Can you imagine such audacity? In a bizarre spectacle, Pope Formosus's body was exhumed from its peaceful slumber, dressed in the sacred vestments befitting his position, and presented before the papal court for judgment. What an eerie sight it must have been. As if that weren't enough, a deacon was appointed to act as the voice of the deceased pope, making the trial even more surreal. Unbelievably, the verdict was in, and it was not in favor of the deceased pope. He was deemed guilty of all charges, and his actions as pope were shockingly declared null and void. The punishment that followed was both chilling and disgraceful. The sacred garments that once adorned him were ruthlessly torn away, replaced with tattered rags, a sight that surely left left many gasping in disbelief. But that wasn't all. It took a macabre turn when three of his blessed fingers, once used for benediction, were forcibly removed. Such a horrifying act of defilement surely struck fear into the hearts of many witnessing the spectacle. The final indignity involved casting the body of Pope Formosus into the solemn waters of the River Tiber, a fate previously reserved for the most notorious criminals in ancient Roman times. The Cadaver Synod stands as a chilling reminder of the extremes to which power struggles can lead, even within the hallowed halls of the Church. Number 12 apostolic penitentiary. In the shadows of history, a covert tribunal has lurked since 1179, hidden from the world's gaze until 2009. Say hello to the enigmatic apostolic penitentiary. This intriguing institution delves into the realm of grave misdeeds committed by individuals seeking justice and redemption. Picture this, a top-secret court where the Pope himself holds the power to grant forgiveness. Yes, you heard it right. Only His Holiness can offer absolution to those brought before this mystical tribunal. Imagine the weight of such a decision, impacting lives and souls. Now let's talk about the sins that make this tribunal tick. We're talking about the big ones, attempting to harm the Pope directly, or even worse, a priest betraying the trust of a person seeking forgiveness by exposing their deepest confessions. These actions are labeled as heinous and can land the culprits in the labyrinth of the apostolic penitentiary. At the heart of it all stands the Pope, donning the mantle of the major penitentiary. A moment of clemency from him and the heavy burden of guilt is lifted. But wait, there's a twist. If the Pope decides not to grant absolution, an automatic excommunication verdict awaits the wrongdoers, cutting them off from the spiritual community. Imagine the intrigue and mystery surrounding this clandestine tribunal. For centuries, it remained veiled, shrouded in secrecy, until modern times brought it into the light. The tales of its cases, decisions, and the lives it has touched remain largely untold and hidden from public eyes. It's a saga that continues to unfold, leaving us pondering the mysteries of faith, forgiveness, and the untold stories that shape the course of history. Number 11. Army of Exorcists in a realm where shadows dance and spirits stir, one man stood as the beacon of hope against darkness. Father Gabriele Amorth, the legendary chief exorcist of the Vatican, whose astonishing tale will leave you spellbound. Exorcism, an ancient art depicted in chilling tales and fables, has long been shrouded in mystery. Yet believe it or not, this mystical practice thrives even in modern times within the sacred walls of the Catholic Church. Father Amorth, a devout priest with a relentless spirit, devoted an incredible 60 years of his life to this extraordinary calling. With unwavering faith, he fearlessly confronted the malevolent forces that dared to plague our world. Astonishingly, it is said that he performed over a jaw-dropping 160,000 exorcisms, a true testament to his unyielding dedication. But he wasn't alone in this epic battle against the forces of darkness. Throughout history, various esteemed popes have also wielded the power of exorcism, acknowledging its profound significance. In a glimpse behind the sacred curtain, the Vatican threw open its doors in 2018 to welcome 250 priests from every corner of the globe to their annual workshop. A gathering like no other, where wisdom and insights into the age-old practice were shared, binding these chosen few in a divine quest. The legacy of Father Amorth and the papal custodians of exorcism continues to reverberate, reminding us that there is much more to this world than meets the eye. It stirs contemplation on the existence of unseen realms and the eternal fight between light and shadow. Number 10. Time Traveling Machine Have you ever wondered about the thrill of traveling through time? Stepping into the past or future, meeting historical figures, and witnessing significant events unfold right before your eyes. It sounds like a plot straight out of a sci-fi movie, but what if I told you that there's a captivating theory about time travel hidden in the heart of Vatican City? 
Vatican City, nestled within Rome, is the world's tiniest independent nation with profound cultural and religious significance. The Vatican holds treasured masterpieces and ancient records, some of which remain hidden from public view, sparking intrigue and conspiracy theories. Enter the Chronovisor, a supposed top-secret time travel device credited to Father Pellegrino Ernetti, a Benedictine monk. According to the tale, the chronovisor worked like a television to the past, allowing Ernetti to witness historical events in real time. From lost Roman plays to Jesus Christ's crucifixion, the alleged sightings were nothing short of extraordinary. The story unfolds further with claims that renowned scientists, including Nobel laureate Enrico Fermi and former German National Socialist scientist turned NASA icon Werner von Braun, were part of the project. However, concrete evidence supporting the chronovisor remains elusive, leaving us to rely solely on Ernetti's accounts. Despite the Vatican's silence on the matter, speculations about the device continue. Some argue that Ernetti was coerced into silence, while others dismiss the chronovisor as a mere hoax. With key players gone and little technical explanation, the legend begins to fade, leaving us to ponder the possibilities. Suppose this device were true, and we had the chronovisor controls in our hands. Would you venture back to witness monumental moments like the crucifixion or ancient speeches? The temptation to explore history firsthand would be irresistible. However, the existence of a real chronovisor could challenge faith and scientific exploration alike. With concrete proof of past events, the need for belief in historical accounts would diminish. For religions built on faith, this could be a game changer. Imagine the impact such a device would have on our world. The chronovisor could be the most groundbreaking invention ever conceived, rewriting the rules of history and knowledge. While the chronovisor's existence remains unconfirmed, the allure of time travel persists. So if you could journey through time, what sights would you wish to behold? The mysteries of the past or the wonders of the future? Intriguingly, the chronovisor theories all revolve around traveling to the past, neglecting the future. Ernetti seemed fixated on reliving history, a curiosity that could change humanity's perspective on life's uncertainties. But until we have a genuine chronovisor, the allure of time travel remains a delightful mystery, forever enticing our imagination. Number 9. Gender Discrimination Amidst the grandeur of the church, countless unsung heroes quietly toil, and they are none other than the resilient nuns who serve as the true global foot soldiers for the Catholic Empire. With unwavering dedication, they run healthcare centers, hospitals, schools, and orphanages in impoverished Catholic societies worldwide, where daily earnings barely exceed $2. These compassionate women embody the spirit of Catholicism, yet they face a profound disparity within the Church's hierarchy. Senior positions, including priesthood, cardinalship, and even papacy, remain forever out of their grasp denying them the opportunity to influence governance and articulate doctrines. The hope for change was raised by the Leadership Conference of Women Religious, representing the majority of American nuns, as they pleaded for women to be involved in all aspects of church ministry, including the priesthood. Regrettably, the Vatican rejected their plea and accused them of violating sacred doctrines and decorum. In recent times, the Vatican expressed dissatisfaction with the nuns, urging them to prioritize discussions on issues deemed crucial to the church and society, such as abortion and gay marriage, over their focus on social justice matters. This discord has led to a disheartening exodus of American nuns who have left the church in staggering numbers. The conservative stance of Pope Francis, while displaying humility and openness, has not positioned him as a champion of gender equality within the church, disappointing those hopeful for progress. As a result of these challenges, the number of American nuns has been dwindling significantly over the years. In 1965, there were 1,80,000 nuns. By 2002, the number had declined to 75,000 and now stands at 56,000. Projections indicate that this number will further decrease as the year goes by. These devoted women, who selflessly serve the Catholic community, deserve recognition and support. It is high time for the Church to reevaluate its stance and acknowledge the invaluable contributions of nuns. Number 7. Enemy Secret Societies let us tell you about ancient secret societies like the enigmatic Freemasons and the infamous Illuminati. These secretive groups have been engaging in a covert struggle against the Church's dominance over society for centuries. Let's delve into their intriguing history. The roots of the Illuminati can be traced back to the enigmatic Luciferian conspiracy and its founder, Adam Weishaupt, 
who established the society on May 1, 1776. Financed by a group of bankers from the House of Rothschild, the Illuminati's global ambitions were set in motion under their guidance. Their target? The Church. The societies saw the Church as their primary adversary, marking it for ultimate destruction. In 1818, their Italian lodge issued permanent instructions, aiming for a pope of their own to weaken the church's stronghold. Their ultimate goal was to wipe out Catholicism and even Christianity entirely. As time passed, the Vatican, the epicenter of one billion Catholics, found itself facing an overwhelming burden. Balancing immense secrecy and a vast global parish became a challenge. Notably, the Vatican faced cyber attacks from groups like Anonymous, who criticized the institution's perceived corruption. While the Illuminati and Freemasons are well known, there exist other mysterious organizations known as the Unknowns. Operating since the 1800s, their sole mission revolves around toppling the Vatican. With over 4,000 devoted members, their identity remains shrouded in secrecy. Little information surfaces due to their loyalists' tragic fate, choosing to end their lives when captured. These societies have long evaded the Church's attempts to counter them, as the Vatican's power is substantial, forcing some of these groups underground. In this ever-changing world, it is crucial for the Church to acknowledge the existence of organizations like the Unknown and act swiftly to protect itself. Number 6. Harm by Clergy from remote Australian country towns to bustling cities in the United States and beyond, the Catholic Church has been grappling with a distressing surge of abuse cases over the past few decades. These heart-wrenching stories have made headlines worldwide, exposing the painful truth of a grave problem within the Church. Recently, a shocking inquiry in France revealed that a staggering over 16,000 children had suffered harm by clergy members since 1950. In response to these appalling revelations, Pope Francis expressed deep sorrow and called for a path of redemption. He made unprecedented efforts to tackle the issue, holding a summit on the issue in the church and amending laws to explicitly criminalize abuse. However, despite these efforts, the church has faced allegations of cover-ups, leaving victims' groups dissatisfied with the actions taken to right the wrongs. The issue of abuse by priests came into the media spotlight in the 1980s, gaining momentum throughout the 1990s in various countries like Argentina, Australia, and Ireland. Disturbingly, reports even suggest that abusive priests were moved around by church leaders instead of facing justice, as exposed by determined reporting in the U.S., notably by the Boston Globe. In the early 2000s, the scale of abuse within the church became a major global concern. Reports revealed thousands of cases, with tens of thousands of children affected, leaving a trail of pain and suffering. Despite pledges for decisive action, criticism has been leveled at Pope Francis for not doing enough to hold bishops accountable for alleged cover-ups. While some progress has been made, critics argue that more needs to be done to ensure justice for the victims. The Pope's recent announcement of changes to Vatican law marks a significant step forward. The new rules will criminalize abuse, grooming of minors, possession of inappropriate media, and covering up abuse. Though progress is being made, the road to healing remains long and arduous. Victims deserve compensation and reforms within the church to prevent further harm. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. This picture was secretly sent to us by someone from the Vatican, and as we can see, something definitely seems fishy here. Are they really like that in real life? What are your thoughts about this photo? Have you heard any secrets about the Vatican that we have not presented here today? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 5. Pickpockets. Amidst the grandeur of Vatican City lies an unexpected challenge, pickpockets. With a crime rate of 1.5 crimes per citizen, it holds the dubious honor of having the highest crime rate in the world. Now don't imagine cardinals donning masks and robbing banks like characters in a thrilling heist movie. No, the real culprits are nimble-fingered pickpockets taking advantage of the bustling crowds. The sheer number of tourists makes it an ideal spot for these crafty thieves. Interestingly, the Vatican lacks its own functioning prison and has only one judge to oversee legal matters. So, when criminals are arrested, they're escorted across the border into Italy. As part of an agreement between the two countries, you could say they're shown the way out. You might wonder, how are crimes dealt with within Vatican City's walls? 
Well, the Vatican's legal system closely follows Italy's, with some differences regarding sensitive issues. Minor offenses, such as shoplifting from duty-free stores, are usually handled internally. Offenders may face temporary bans from certain areas. While pickpocketing is the most common crime, there have been rare instances of more serious offenses. For instance, in 2007, Vatican City witnessed its first prohibited substance conviction when an employee was convicted with a small amount of narcotics on his desk. So if you're planning to explore the wonders of Vatican City, remember to keep your valuables secure and stay vigilant against those quick-fingered pickpockets. Number 4. Largest Collection of Erotic Material Among the countless secrets guarded within its hallowed walls, there exists a curious whisper that has piqued the curiosity of conspiracy theorists worldwide. Rumor has it that hidden amidst the ancient tomes and sacred texts, the Vatican archives might harbor an unexpected collection, none other than an assortment of historical intimacy. Skeptics and enthusiasts alike are drawn to the notion, eager to decipher the truth veiled in history's cryptic embrace. Surprisingly, whispers of Copenhagen's Museum of Obscenity confirming these speculations have added fuel to the fire. But let's not stop there. Noteworthy personalities like the esteemed National Review founder William Buckley Jr. and the scholar Camilla Paglia have also lent their voices to this mystifying tale, further igniting the fervor of curiosity. Now, while some might raise an eyebrow, we must approach this with open minds and discernment. After all, history loves to weave unexpected narratives, and the Vatican's ancient allure is no stranger to extraordinary secrets. Number 3 signs of historic aliens. There are secrets that Vatican's are hiding about extraterrestrial life. Believe it or not, but it's rumored to be in the form of mysterious skulls that are not of humans. Hidden within the hallowed halls of the Vatican archives, secrets of cosmic proportions are said to be concealed. These alleged secrets go far beyond our wildest imagination, raising eyebrows and igniting curious minds around the globe. Could it be that high-ranking officials are in cahoots with otherworldly beings? But hold on tight, because that's not all. Brace yourself for an astonishing twist. The shocking talk of the town suggests that these enigmatic extraterrestrials may have more in store for us than we ever thought possible. Whispers hint at a diabolical plan to implant every single Earthling with futuristic computer chips. Yes, you heard it right. The very essence of humanity may be at stake here. While skepticism is only natural, the mere possibility of such revelations can't be easily brushed aside. As tales of government cover-ups and classified documents abound, it becomes increasingly difficult to ignore the potential existence of other life forms beyond our blue planet. Number 2. Financial Corruption Let's delve into the enigmatic world of the Vatican Bank, also known as the Institute for the Works of Religion, IOR. Brace yourself for shocking revelations. One of the most gripping chapters in the Vatican Bank's history revolves around its questionable dealings with none other than Adolf Hitler himself. Renowned historian Gerald Posner unravels this astonishing tale, shedding light on the Vatican's acceptance of church tax from Hitler year after year. But hold on, that's not all. The Vatican Bank's allure lies in its ability to conceal vast sums of money, bypassing the watchful eyes of Western banks. Imagine mountains of cash stashed away within the secure confines of the IOR, remaining shrouded in mystery, never exposed to the public gaze. As we journey through this labyrinthine narrative, questions abound. How did the Vatican Bank manage to handle these clandestine transactions? Who were the puppeteers behind this financial ruse? And why has the full extent of these transactions remained veiled in secrecy? Beneath the hallowed walls of the Vatican, a financial drama unfolds, filled with twists and turns that rival the most gripping thrillers. The Vatican Bank's shadowy entanglements have left both experts and the public alike bewildered, seeking answers to this enigma. Number 1. Swindling in the Name of Charity Every year, a heartwarming call goes out to the global Catholic community in June. It's a time to open hearts and wallets for the cherished charitable appeal known as Peter's Pence. The Vatican, with an enticing promise, assures the faithful that their contributions will make a difference in alleviating poverty and easing the suffering of those in need. But a revealing investigation by the Wall Street Journal has shed light on a surprising truth. Only a small fraction, a mere 10% of the impressive 50 million euros donated annually, that's 72 million Canadian dollars, reaches the hands of the needy. So where does the bulk of the funds flow? 
The Vatican employs most of the donations to combat its growing budget deficit, which ballooned to a staggering 70 million euros in 2018. That's a whopping 102 million Canadian dollars. Under the wings of church law, the Pope holds the reins to wield Peter's pence in ways that serve his divine mission. Though the Vatican does acknowledge this liberty in its fine print, the overarching message remains focused on acts of compassion and support for those affected by disasters and poverty. Reading between the lines becomes essential in comprehending the true destination of these donations. The Vatican's website charmingly refers to it as a gesture of charity and a call to address new forms of poverty and fragility. Such phrases are skillfully woven to emphasize the spirit of benevolence, overshadowing the reality that the Pope exercises discretion over the funds. Remarkably, the investigation uncovered that for the past five years, a staggering two-thirds of the collection found its purpose in patching up the Holy See's deficit. This financial shortfall stems from the central administration of the Catholic Church and the Pope's diplomatic network worldwide, which experienced escalating deficits due to rising wage costs and less fortunate investments.